You're watching the Mr. Quality Guy YouTube channel. Hello everyone, Mr. Quality Guy here, and today we're going to look at the 1986 Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. And so this video is going to be pretty long, so sit back, take your protein pills, put your helmet on, and let's get right into it. So the 1986 Challenger disaster is a moment in history that is considered to be uh, definitely a dark one. Uh, considering the time and atmosphere being in the Cold War, the idea of the U.S. not being able to get into space was a difficult one. Uh, so what exactly happened? The Space Shuttle, shuttle Challenger disaster was a fatal accident in the United States space program that occurred on January 28, 1986, when the Space Shuttle Challenger OV-099 broke apart 73 seconds into its flight, killing all seven crew members aboard. The disaster was caused by, by the failure of the two redundant O-ring seals and a joint in the Space Shuttle's right solid rocket booster, SRB. The record low temperatures of the launch reduced the elasticity of the rubber O-rings, reducing their ability to seal the joints. The broken seals caused a breach into the joint shortly after liftoff, which allowed pressurized gas from within the SRB to leak and burn through the wall to the adjacent external fuel tank. This led to the separation of the right-hand SRB's aft attachment, which caused it to crash into the external tank, which caused a structural failure of the external tank and an explosion. So here's a picture of the design. As we see in the design, O-rings were meant to serve as static seals with a cross-section diameter of 0 0.280 inches or 7.1 millimeters. And static seals are fantastic uh, at staying stationary. Um, but we're going to go into type of O-ring seals so you can understand what a static seal is. Static seals are non-moving and can be broken down into two types, axial seals and radial seals. Dynamics, dynamic are moving seals and can be broken into three different types reciprocating, rotary, and oscillating. So let's go into more into static seals. Static seals are installed in a motionless environment. This allows static seals to last over an extended period of time, especially when the right material is selected that can withstand the application conditions. Factors such as temperature, pressure, and chemical exposure have a large impact on the lifespan of a seal. And now for dynamic seals. Since dynamic seals are exposed to movement and friction, their lifespan is ultimately shorter than static seals. Dynamic seals will require more maintenance and at a faster rate compared to static seals. It is important to keep this in mind in order to avoid seal failure. O-ring concerns. Evaluations of the proposed SRB design in the early 1970s and field joint testing showed that the wide tolerances between the mated parts allowed the O-ring to be extruded from their seats rather than compressed. This extrusion was judged to be acceptable by NASA and Morton Thickle, despite concerns of NASA, NASA's engineers. A 1977 test showed that up to 0.052 inches, 1.3 millimeters of joint rotation occurred during the simulated internal pressure of a launch. Joint rotation, which occurs when the tang and clevis bent away from each other, reduced the pressure on the O-rings, which weakened their seals and made it possible for combustion gases to erode the O-rings. NASA engineers suggested that the field joints should be redesigned to include shims around the O-rings, but they received no response. In 1980, the NASA Verification Certification Committee requested further tests on joint integrity to include testing in the temperature range of 40 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 to 30 degrees Celsius. And with only a single O-ring installed, the NASA program managers decided that their current level of testing was sufficient and further testing was not required. The first occurrence of an in-flight O-ring erosion occurred on the right SRB on STS-2 in November 1981 
In August 1984, a post-flight inspection of the left SRB on STS-41-D revealed that soot had blown past the primary O-ring and was found in between the O-rings. Although there was no damage to the secondary O-ring, it indicated that the primary O-ring was not creating a reliable seal and was allowing hot gases to pass. The amount of O-ring erosion was insufficient to prevent the O-ring from sealing and investigators concluded that the soot between the O-rings resulted from non-uniform pressure at time of ignition. The January 1985 launch of STS-51-C was the coldest space level launch to date. The air temperature was 62 degrees Fahrenheit at the time of launch and calculated O-ring temperature was 53 degrees. Post-flight analysis revealed that erosion in primary O-ring in both SRBs Morton Thickle engineers determined that the cold temperatures caused loss of flexibility in the O-rings that decreased their ability to seal the field joints, which allowed hot gas and soot to flow past the primary O-ring. O-ring er erosion occurred on all but one STS-51-J of space shuttle flights in 1985, and erosion of both primary and secondary O-rings occurred on STS-51-B. So, they knew O-rings were an issue, and yet, nothing was done. But, how about some ways that we know that can prevent the disaster? Uh, further testing, the Verification Committee suggested testing down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which program managers ignored. Uh, if we tested down to 40 degrees and noticed that there was issues, then we would, then there would definitely have to be a redesign. Uh, a thicker tang and clevis. Thicker material will reduce rotation that caused O-ring decompression. So the rotation was caused to the tang and clevis bending. Uh, they were made thicker. Yes, you get have to add more weight. However, the weight would be immaterial in compared to safety. Uh, now if we look at modern vehicles, modern vehicles are much heavier than some vehicles of the 70s. And it's not because... Uh, you know, it's because of all the safety equipment in them. Uh, you know, if you look at a vehicle from 1970, it is just steel and four wires, uh, you know, pretty much. You know, modern cars, you know, you have, you know, a massive bundle of wires and sensors and airbags and all sorts of safety equipment. So as a side effect, vehicles have gotten heavier. Uh, larger O-rings. A minor bump up in O-ring cross-sectional thickness will provide a better compression seal. So O-rings seal on compression. Uh, essentially, these O-rings were undersized for the application due to the fact that they were just not, they were losing compression under rotation. Uh, going to a larger cross-section would improve that. Now, was there an issue between using metric and standard? And there could have been some, you know, some items that were machined in metric when they were meant to be machined in standard, or some items machined in standard when they were meant to be metric. That's neither here nor there. But O-rings require compression to work properly. So that is a overview of the 1986 Challenger disaster. Something that could have been easily prevented. And honestly, failed because of two 10 cent parts. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys again. That was a video on the 1986 Challenger disaster. If you're interested in more quality failures throughout history, just like and comment down below and we'll try to get to them. Thank you for watching and have a great day.